Hello and welcome to the PMQ live broadcast uh, for today, which is uh, Tuesday, May 26th, day after Memorial Day. I always wear pants in these broadcasts. Um, I'm not going to try to prove it, but I am here today with uh, a good friend, Adam Weisel. Um, he's actually, uh, he, he was on the pivot. He was ready to go. Uh, he kind of got thrust into this at the last minute. So I do appreciate your time, Adam. Why don't you say hello to everybody out there in the in the world? Hi, everybody. My name is Adam Weissel. I'm the chef owner of Laventino Forno Romano in Streeterville, Chicago. And um, yeah, I'm just super excited to, for this opportunity to, to chat with you, Brian, and talk about pizza and um, what we're doing in these, uh, as they say, challenging times. It's always fun. Um, yeah. Well, uh, no, absolutely. I mean, and, and actually at this point, what we want to do is I want to let everybody know uh, you can ask the comments of Adam right there in the Facebook comments and we'll get them answered. Um, we do appreciate you guys watching, but I mean, hopefully Adam can, uh, you know, dispel some nuggets of wisdom on on you guys. Uh, maybe something that he's going through right now that you're struggling with or something he's overcome that can help you. So if you have any comments just uh, or questions, just uh, feel free to uh, post them there in the Facebook Live. So basically... Um, Laventino Forno Romano. See, it's kind of brand new, right? Very, very, yeah. Okay, so, so I mean, you guys, uh, you you took over a space. It, I think it was one of those. Um, it's been turned over three or four times. We yeah. all know those dead spaces that people can't make work. So yeah, um, you took it over. But I mean, uh, when when did you guys open? And uh, just with, within like two minutes, kind of give us a brief history of what you guys do and and you know what you're about. Sure. So um, we opened on November 19th, uh, 2019, last year. Um, it was a project that's been a few years, like I'd been kicking around in my head for a couple years, but it took it took that long to get to actually come to fruition. Uh, I learned about this space that had turned over several times and uh, had, uh, had struggled to make it work and uh, figured out a, a deal to, to get my... Uh, Roman style pinceria uh, concept open. So what we do is a Roman pinza. It's kind of the, I guess the new thing in the pizza world. I'm sure everybody's heard of it or uh, at least seen yeah. it. Um, it's got, it's, it's characteristically fluffy, airy crust, a long fermentation, uh, natural starter and uh, dry yeast. Flour uh, is uh, rice, soy, and wheat, mostly wheat. Um, high, high hydration, 80%. And we've built the restaurant around, this is the backbone. This is what we serve. We, we top it with the freshest Italian, uh, carefully sourced ingredients. And um, nothing too crazy, pretty traditional. Uh, some signature pizzas that are, that are really... Um, people have uh, taken to, and we also do, you know, some salads, vegetable, antipasti, some salumi, cheese, um, just classic Italian, uh, it's comfort food, essentially, a little bit, like kind of a high-end flair to it, but I mean, at the end of the day, it's pizza, it's, you know, it's dough with cheese and sauce. Um, we have some desserts, we have a all-Italian wine list, and um, uh, craft beers, Oh, look at that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, but, at, a, at Federale too, you know, they're, yeah. they're a, a good sponsor of the U.S. Pizza team as well. Oh, really? So that's, uh, it's my yeah, favorite water. absolutely. It's my favorite water. <laughs> I oh, actually, yeah. Uh, I, I grew up in, in, uh, in Rome. I'm American, but I, I grew up in Rome. And so that's where um, a lot of this, my, my choice of career came from and my just where this concept came from. So Ferrarella is the water that I grew up drinking. We used to get cases of it at a time. And uh, in Italy, you return the bottles and you can get new ones. And so it's got a real special place for me. Yeah, yeah they've uh, they've been nothing but good to our U.S. speech team. So they, I didn't actually realize that. Um, so, all right. So you're American who grew up in Rome and you, yeah. you've kind of gone on to the pizza. But I, I wanted to kind of talk to you about um, uh, you made a conscious decision to close um, – earlier the year in the yeah. year uh, you closed for about a month and then you reopened. I, you know, I want to talk to you about what, again, you're in Chicago. So um, we've had a uh, Lenny Rago from Panino's it was in a similar situation. He actually closed down and, and reopened. So we got his perspective, but I mean, you, they're established. 
you're you're right. relatively brand new. I mean, yeah. from November. I mean, that's, I mean, that's kind of insane. From November 2019. Yeah. Um. So I mean, what was the What made you decide to close down? Because uh, actually, what was your business base? Were you uh, dine in, uh, carry out, and delivery, or just dine in? Or I mean, what was that? Yeah. So I mean, uh, up until the whole pandemic became a reality and the, the orders for shutdown started to happen. We were a, a sit down restaurant dine in with, I would say maybe between 15 to 25% carry out depending on the day. Um, and so, yeah, I mean, it, it was obviously a huge disruption to the business model and you know, we're full service. We have you know, bus boys, um, servers, a bartender, like I said, there's wine and beer, there's cocktails. So um, it was a full staff that all of a sudden we, we were just questioning, okay, does that, who, who has, what are we going to do? Do we have any hours for people? Um, who's going to get those hours? Uh, at first we decided to stay open for a couple weeks. Uh, well, it wasn't, it wasn't even like, oh, it's going to be two weeks. It was just, let's keep going, delivery, take out. And we did that for two or three weeks after the shutdown and um it was well received i mean we wanted to be there for the neighborhood we wanted to show that we weren't quitting and all that kind of stuff but it just as the number of cases spread in chicago and and you know i am i have a, a lot of friends in new york and it just you know the the numbers you were hearing were just going crazy and everybody a lot of the staff said i i don't they weren't comfortable working one didn't and um, I wasn't really comfortable working. It just felt weird. So we just made the decision to, to, to close down and monitor the situation week by week and see what happens. And I felt reinforced or, or assured in this decision because I saw a lot of well-respected big name restaurants in Chicago do the same thing. Just post mm -hmm. on Facebook like, hey, you know, this is crazy. We're, we're going to yeah, just shut down. It's the safest thing for our staff, for you, for everybody and, and monitor the situation. So that's what we did. And, um, most April we just stayed at home. Um, yeah, I, I didn't really, I did very little at the restaurant uh, except some inventory and, and, you know, obviously that kind of stuff, um, watering the plants. <laughs> you, gotta, you, can't, well, you can't forget the poor plants <laughs> you gotta keep yourself busy yeah you just yeah. make you know keep up the the facade of normalcy as best you can right. um you know i i wanted to ask you about um kind of jump delving into this nice topic and we don't want to spend too much on this because we've talked about this with a lot of people but um employee retention uh, -huh. uh and things like that but also like the ppp because you you were a brand new shop um, and you you'd mentioned you only had about like, what was it like 16, mm -hmm. uh, 16 full-time employees. Yeah. I mean, were you able to qualify for PPP or SBA? Yeah. Yeah. Um, the, the PPP money, uh, came through late, very late. Um, uh, I mean, compared to when you need it or when, when you need to make those decisions as to, you know, people's livelihood and that kind of stuff. But, uh, some yeah. money came through, uh, for that. So um, that that obviously helps a lot in in takes away the the pressure at least you know in the restaurant business the pressure of labor cost and is always weighing on you and when that's relieved it just kind of makes this situation a little bit easier to manage when you're not just worried about like who's hours clock out clock out you know yeah, yeah. <laughs> well it, it, it kind of compounds itself when you have uh, fewer for your employees that uh, that labor cost kind of exponentially gets higher just you know right. so every minute at that point every almost second counts but um right. all right so i mean as far as like you you had to furlough a few employees i would assume um yeah. you know was there a guarantee of their job coming back uh did you have any hesitance from any of them to come back because i know we were talking earlier about that uh, this unemployment's gonna dry up in july right um, because there's a big thing about right now that a lot of employees just want to stay home because they're making more money than they were at work. Sure. Um, I mean, did you get some people that just jumped on board as soon as they got those hours? They're like, yeah, I'm going to come come back. And then uh, have you had anybody kind of jump ship through no fault of their own? But 
Yeah, I mean, it, it's um, there was a few a few employees who've just come back to work full time with with you know the certain guarantee of hours, um, and um, they just wanted to work as opposed to uh, as opposed to just take stay stay at home and take the unemployment. Um, the entire staff was furloughed, uh, and then we're rehiring as as things change. You know, um, everybody's welcome to their job back if we have hours for them. It's not a, that's that's really I'm not gonna, um, you know, tell anybody they can't come back. But obviously, the situation with reopening is going to be different than when we left off. So. Yeah, there may not be the same number of hours for everybody, but um, they'll have to essentially reapply because we're basically starting from scratch um, in a new environment. But uh, I've talked to almost all the employees, or at least touched base with social uh, via social media with everybody, and everybody wants to get back to work. Um, everybody, you know, everybody knows this is ending, and um, you, you, yeah. you know, you, we need to watch out for our financial reality, but uh, it's the same with every restaurant. I mean, none of us want to stay at home and just and coast uh, and kind of yeah. live. In, it's not even coasting; it's like this limbo or purgatory. I, it's just weird. Yeah, sorry. I'm well, no, I, there. I was the same. Uh, they went back to the office today. Tried to set up my office there, so now right. I have my home office and studio. Uh, trying to get this thing set up uh, on location so I can actually work and confab with all my, uh, you know, everybody, all my fellow employees and stuff like that. So, um, and so you guys kind of pivoted uh, from the dine-in carry-out to go. And you always offer delivery and carry-out, right? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So, you, but you had to kind of pivot to that whole thing right there. Um, did you see kind of a, I know we had talked earlier, but did you see kind of a down dip in, in business there? I mean, you had said something at some point that you were kind of disheartened about the lack of business at one point too. Yeah. Um, you know, did your staff freak out a little bit or? Well, I mean, it's just when you're, when you are a, a dine in restaurant, it, it, pivoting to a, a takeout model is really, I think it's, it's unrealistic to expect the same source of revenue and just in the fact that 30 percent of our sales are wine and liquor all of a sudden those are gone i mean we are still selling some of our some of our inventory at discounted rate but that's just not the same type of thing um so yeah i mean the the number the numbers uh just dropped drastically um the, the the thing that then the flip side is you know we're working now with a lower number of staff and um it's actually kind of it's just kind of it's just nice in its simplicity you know now that you just you we're only doing to go max number of people we got working on a friday is four four people everybody kind of cross trains like somebody works the oven mm -hmm. somebody works salads building the pizzas everybody shares you know, the washing up duties, um, somebody works expediting, taking the orders, somebody greets the customers and pass, make sure they get their food right. Um, and yeah, it's, 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 it's cool to work in a smaller team. Um, it, it's not sustainable for the long term, but, uh, I actually got to say in a, in a, in a strange way, the simplicity and the, the, just the, the downsizing has been, has been nice. Um, and it, well, and it, well, it's funny you mentioned that. I've been hearing that a lot, too. A lot of people are saying it's like uh, it's, it's been kind of a, a nice respite from uh, the, the crazy busy. Um, and some people I've actually heard, they're they're like, well, maybe we won't open dine in again. Just, <laughs> right. I don't know how you can pivot that much from what your original business model is. I mean, without pissing off all your. <laughs> right. All your loyal customers. But I do want to say thank you, Lily um, D'Agostino uh, from Australia. I'm going to try this. Please, if I butcher the language, um, what's the capacity of customers that you can currently reopen for dining with? That was terrible. I'm sorry. <laughs> She's. What's the capacity of customers that you can currently reopen for dine in with um, and she's asking from australia now right. i know this actually she's leading some of the questions that i have because there are i have it underlined here that um there are no really concrete guidelines for chicago right right now right 
No. Um, well, I just read, um, I just read an, an article. These articles come out daily. Um, I just read one this morning uh, with the, uh, the guidelines for uh, dine-in reopening. Um, and, and I'm not, I'm not going to say anything definitive because I don't remember exactly, but early June, we are um, apparently going to be allowed to have outdoor seating still with a social distancing guideline. So like six feet radius around the tables. Um, and then we will see about the indoor allowances that we're going to have. I'm, I'm, I'm sure that the capacity is going to be at, I think I've heard 50% being thrown around. Um, yeah. So that's probably what I'm, I'm anticipating. Uh, but it, 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 in light of like, like you said, you know, we've now pivoted to a full to go and, and, and delivery model. Well, that's not going to go away. So what I think is going to happen is we're going to be, you know, remain for the, for June with the, I mean, June, July, probably, uh, 70%, I'm just guessing, but you know, 70% to go in delivery and then just have uh, a few tables and, and it's probably going to be reservation only or call ahead, you know? Um, and because I think safety and people's sense of safety is the most important thing. Like what we can not, not only make sure that they're safe, but make sure they feel safe. So we're, we're not going to be able to pack, you know, to do, three turns at 50% capacity. It's, it's going to have to be slow and controlled and we're going to learn as we go and still make the, make up the difference with that to go and deliver yeah. business that we that we're now building up. And it's, you know, it's going to stay that way for a month, two months, and then hopefully things change back and we're e restrictions are eased and we'll be able to go back to full capacity and, uh, yeah, hopefully then it, it'll be able to, to, to have, a to go back to basically where we were for the, yeah, that would probably be the fall, uh, realistic. Yeah, yeah. That's never going to happen, man. There was never where we were. Right. I, I'm, I'm, yeah. right. <laughs> but yeah, you get ready for the new normal. Right. That's what it is. But I mean, that's what you have is a good, you, you've got a good uh, roadmap to get yeah. there for sure it, it, but it's it's i mean it, i think it's just going to be week by week and see yeah. how how it unfolds and how people you know maybe maybe everybody's itching to come back and the place is packed maybe people are scared out of their minds and we don't really do very much business in in house i have no way of knowing um and and i guess yeah sorry go ahead no I'm, you go ahead for sure uh, my my guess is that I, I, the feeling I get is that people are eager to come out, but they want to be reassured that it's going to be safe. So um, that's just, that's just in conversations with my regular customers. You know, they're like, "Oh, we can't wait to come back," but you know, they're they're there. They're they're not storming in. We you know, everybody's got their mask on, their their gloves. They're careful about the interactions that we have, everybody's maintaining the distance. So those same people who say they want to come back are still conscious of that. This is still going on in Chicago and well, everywhere, but in, in, in big cities, it's especially uh, still a, a major factor. So. Um, well, no. And again, uh, since we just kind of set this up last night, uh, we haven't had a chance to organize a little bit, but the, we're, we're jumping all over the topics that we wanted to, to right. say. One of those was, is about, no, <laughs> It's not anybody's fault. Uh, projecting sanitation, you know, mm -hmm. after, um, I mean, a lot of states are reopening right now. Are, are you doing a lot to kind of project that uh, that uh, air of sanitation to your customers? I mean, sure. you're making sure that they see your, your employees in masks and gloves. Sure. Um, what are you doing in that front? Yeah, so, I mean, it's just, uh, if, first of all, the, the, the first thing that we did was go over Again, you know, the importance with, of, with the staff, the importance of consistent and uh, constant hand washing, gloves, changing gloves, uh, wearing a mask and disinfecting all the surfaces and, um, and cross contamination, which is always, you know, everybody in restaurants already knows all of this. And it's, it's nothing really surprisingly is very new except for the masks or everything else is stuff that the restaurant business has done forever. But it's reinforcing that now it is really important and uh, that you're going to be held accountable for this. 
and uh, you know the temperature taking, making sure that you you know do not come into work even if you're just feeling kind of under the weather. You know that that was um, that that was also uh, a first step. And then, then the, the rest of it is just making sure that the customers see your efforts and see that you are sanitizing the tabletops and uh, pens, if there are any pens that are used, and that the menus are now uh, disposable only. There's single-use to-go menus, and everything mm-hmm. is single-use, and it's in its packaging, and it's new. There's nothing, you know, nothing is, is, is being reused and... and um, yeah, just making sure that people are, are are reassured that yeah, this is this is all sanitized. Nothing in this restaurant is going to uh, get you sick or compromise anything like that. Well, and that's yeah, and that's what I'm saying. You know, I think everybody needs to kind of go through that uh, back to the single serve. Mm-hmm. Don't put the salt shakers out there. Right. The single serve packets. Yeah. Um, I mean, that's it's just one of those things where you have to kind of project that the. Uh, um, just that cleanliness because mm-hmm. people used to come in there because based on quality and you know type of service right now they want to make sure that they're going to be safe i would assume most people are I, I don't know i've been seeing some of the news i'm not going to talk about that so <laughs> right 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 so you're yeah you're putting that out there so um uh i mean uh, Hold on one second here. Uh, so you had to kind of train your cust or your your servers. You, you kind of retrained. You didn't. You tried to keep as many as you could, and you reallocated them, say like servers to sanitation or expediters and stuff yeah. like that. What's the best way somebody can actually, instead of letting somebody go, try to repurpose them in the store? I mean, what are some of the things you've done? Well, I uh, the it, the awesome thing was that our servers really, I, I didn't, can't even say that I did any sort of retraining. They just switched right into that role immediately. It was just, you know, the role of greeting the customers, uh, letting them know how things have changed, what they can do, how they can get their order in and uh, explain, you know, uh, the menu and then take the orders over the phone or whether it's uh, with the tablets, some of the tablets. And uh, then just just function as that expediter, like pack up, pack up the orders, making sure that their little ticket is stapled to their bags so that nothing gets, uh, this could be, orders don't get confused. And mm-hmm. the, the people who helped us out in that capacity really developed their own system. And I really can't even say that I can contribute at all. That was like amazed. Like, no, they, they learned how to do that very quickly. And, um, like I said, you know, when, Times like this, these, when it, think, all these roles go out the window, it's like, whereas before, maybe like, oh, I'm not a dishwasher or I don't, you know, bust tables. Well, obviously that's all gone. You know, everybody now, everybody cleans the bathroom. Everybody, uh, you know, folds pizza boxes. Every, you know, everybody cuts up mozzarella and everybody runs the, mach- the, the utensils and stuff through the dish machine. It's just, and 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 I've been really impressed. Like nobody, there's no pushback. It's just like, you know, things have changed, and it was pretty clear. And uh, so, it, I I would be honestly surprised if if anybody in in, a, in another restaurant were to be like, oh, that's that's not how we did it before. Like clearly, nothing is how we did it before. You know. <laughs> No, absolutely. You know, it sounds like it's what you're saying is there is no me anymore. There's right, we. Right. Um, that attitude has shifted. And they, we always want that we attitude in a restaurant anyway, because it's not just one person in their job. It, I mean, if they're it's the whole restaurant, otherwise they don't have a job. So exactly. Um, I'm glad that people are stepping up for that. Um, I do want to ask you about. Um, all right. So before, you know, we'll, we'll get this done out real quick. Pizza. Um, I, I've talked with uh, Carlo Padone yeah. up there in, uh, in uh, Milwaukee. Yeah. Um, but uh, pizza, as far as like carry out and delivery, that's a little bit hardier than what your Neapolitan sure. is. It kind of gives the same styles, kind of the same flavor. Mm-hmm. Well, the flavor, but uh, the same feel. But I mean, why don't you explain to us why that's a little bit um, easier for people to for carry out and delivery? Sure. So, uh, pizza, pizza just travels in my opinion, much better than a lot of styles of pizza. And, um, it also reheats really well. And in my experience, 
even if a pizza has gotten down to room temperature, if you get your oven up to 400 or so degrees and pop that pizza back in just to melt the cheese and warm it through, the bottom gets crispy again. It's as good as new. So I've been really, really uh, happy and confident with our ability to, to serve a high quality product that travels to the house without really uh, dying on the way. Um, it's, it, it, yeah, it's just the nature of the dough, the nature of that. We actually work with a, with a par baking system on that dough so that the, the, all of the crusts before service go into the oven for about 90 seconds at about 600 and change, uh, degrees Fahrenheit. So they, um, they really, they're already par baked. They have a nice moisture content. They hold up super well. And, and I'm just like, I, I couldn't be happier. Like, like I said, there's nothing as, as, as a, as a chef, you never want to be serving anything that's declined in quality. Uh, and, and, and this is holding up just amazingly. And like, yeah, you're just seeing the images here. These, um, you know, it's just, they're there. It's, it's a great, it's a great vehicle for flavor and it travels really well. I can't say enough good things about it. I've been super happy with it. So, um, yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. I was, I was talking when I was muted. Yeah. I was trying to get to the best parts of the video. Uh, mm -hmm. and, you know, when I'll give it a full on uh, commercial for pizza, but I mean, it's, um, it's one of those things, like you said, it has that par bake, uh, yeah. and it is, uh, that in itself lends itself to, um, being taken home or just, traveling a little bit better um so yeah. i mean it's it's but it has that that kind of uh i mean you you can see it it's got that kind of roman uh yeah. roman dough so i yeah. mean it's a very high hydration super high um, hydration super high yeah hydration. absolutely i mean it's just like soup i i mean i was watching uh, <laughs> this gentleman here working with it it's just insane but yeah. uh and here's the par bake you put it on yeah. par bake you put it on your trays and then you're ready to go and then you said four minutes later ready to yep. go this absolutely allows nothing against neapolitan but i mean you know what i mean it's the uh, it, it, neapolitan just doesn't travel as well and it's not it made to not. it's made to be enjoyed right away right for sure so yeah no um, I mean, so i mean it, is, is is just a different a completely different animal you know right right and so i mean you consider yourself over there at Levantino uh, a, a pizzeria versus yeah. a pizzeria I mean, I don't, I don't want to confuse people and I don't want to come off like ostentatious or anything, but I do tell people like our style of pizza is called pinza. It's a Roman style. Um, it's like a modern take on, on an old, old style of, of baking pizza, uh, Roman style flatbreads. If you go to Rome, you'll, you know, there's the, the pizza alla teglia in uh, the baked in sheet pans that you get cut to order. There's pizza bianca. There's just a very recognizable Roman quality to this dough. Um, and um, it, it just um, it, it, it uh, has just that it's traditionally eaten on the go. It's traditionally not necessarily eating, eaten piping hot out of the oven, but just warmed up again. Like this kind of just the it, it's just made for that. So it, it works really well. So it, you can eat it in this style, like a Neapolitan style in the restaurant um, as a sit down thing, but it travels, you know, it travels well and it, it's made for that. It's made for that. And a lot of the toppings too, if you put fresh like salad, uncooked toppings after it comes out, like arugula and little, uh, the chiliagina of mozzarella, cherry mm -hmm. tomatoes, uh, thin shavings of zucchini, these types of room temperature kind of salad toppings that works really well too. And obviously yeah. that is, is made to be eaten at room temperature too. So yeah, it all works. Yeah. I mean, just, I mean, that looks like Roman dough right there. So yeah. um, getting it, mesmerized yeah. by this. <laughs> I, I know. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm not trying to do it too much, but I mean, this is a, uh, this is a video I made for uh, Carlo Padoni and the yeah, pizza. yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, we're doing all those types of things too. Like we're, you know, like the, the oh, he's making the, the, the little balls of dough, but yeah, yeah. the technique in, 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 in handling this dough is obviously different than other styles of dough. I mean, it's just, it's, it's so specific to handle something that's 80, 85% water and be able to seal in the, um, 
seal in with a gluten structure on the outside, seal in the dough. That's, that's yeah. a lot. That's like, I would say like, so that's 50% of our day is just making sure that that gets done right. And then the rest is just, yeah, you cut up some fresh mozzarella and blend some good San Marzano tomatoes. So that's, that's the easy part. Put that on top, you know? Yeah. All right. Well, Carlo, there's your free commercial for today. Uh, I'm going to have to stop because <laughs> yeah. it was a good video to make. It was a, it, they, they hosted me while uh, it was a fun time talking with these yeah. guys and actually getting in there to be able to learn the process. So back to uh, some more, you know, marketing stuff. I wanted to say that um, I was surprised that you told me you didn't use the interwebs as a tool before. Uh, you really kind of steer clear of that, but now you've actually kind of gone into that. So as a newcomer to using social media and, and inter internet marketing and stuff like that, uh, you know, what's, what's the first thing you learned? And, you know, in, the, in a minute, how did you progress? If you can give me like within a minute. Sure, sure, sure. I mean, so it's not like we didn't have a Facebook page and an Instagram before. I would just was a lot less consistent and I didn't really, it wasn't like the focal point. But as this came a, a reality, I was just saying that the way I've put it to people is that like when your restaurant, when people are not allowed to come into your restaurant and get sold the concept by the servers and the bartender and the, and the managers and, and eat the food in the place, the only way this restaurant exists is virtually. It, it only exists on social media uh, and the, and other platforms, you know? And, and so that, essentially becomes the experience the way that people get to get a snippet of what is to come is through instagram instagram especially but also facebook uh and so clearly that uh, daily if not multi-day postings and updating and targeting your audience making sure that they know what's going on making sure that the people who are potentially interested are know about it and come in uh, and order that's that's the new that's the new way because if you don't if you don't do that if you run a special and you don't post it anywhere if you just kind of say oh we got a special they, by the time people have called the restaurant they've already decided what they want to order you know so that's the new trick is is making sure that people are getting a, a snippet of what's happening every day before they call or putting that in their brain so like oh i'm gonna go there tomorrow you know it's such an important deal now it's, right. it's just the way that you have to do things. And well, I mean, you're dealing with, oh, I'm sorry, go ahead. No, it's just like you have to figure out all the little nuances of like, yeah, if you're going to boost the post and pay for some advertising, like who, who do you want to see that? Um, if you're all the hashtags, you know, those, they've yeah. always been important and influencers and people have known this for a long time. I'm not talking about anything new. It's just now it's, it's essential. It's just, it's essential. It's, yeah. Well, I mean, you're dealing with uh, platforms like Facebook, Instagram, which is a big one just because it's it's visual. Yeah. That, yeah. Everybody eats with their eyes first. Sure. Um, Yelp, which is the bane of every restaurant's existence, as far as I can tell. Yeah. It's a double edged uh, sword. Um, sword. Yeah, absolutely. So, um, I mean, at this point, uh, coming back, you would close down and you were opening back up. You guys are pretty pretty brand new at that point mm -hmm. um you'd only been open for what maybe five six months before you actually had to close four, down four did months. you um have to do a concerted media effort or marketing effort to get your customers back or were you trying to gain new ones or were they were your customer base were they there waiting for you to reopen you know like you know vikings at the gate just yeah. like open up now that we were very lucky and i was really really appreciative that our loyal customers our regulars they were there waiting for us to open up and the neighborhood even the people i don't necessarily reg recognize as regulars have you know re expressed that they just a lot of people just walk by and give you, you know, a thumbs up you know and um so you know that they appreciate that you're there and then people have stopped by and they say oh, i'm not going to order today but i just wanted to say thank you for opening again um i mean i did do an email blast to our, our email list um social media post um some digital advertising in the in the buildings around us they have the digital billboards um that you can um advertise with and then i also sent out emails to the building managers making sure that the residents could could know but outside of that it was just people were were waiting for us to be open and they've stopped by and like i said so many of them like have said you know we're so sorry this happened you know you're so young and we really want to make sure that 
this restaurant sticks around. We're, we're here for you, that kind of stuff. So um, I've been very touched by how much the neighborhood wants us to succeed. And um, did you yeah. do any kind of deep discounting or any discounting at all um, to try to get people back? I think yeah. we were talking that something that uh, grabbed my attention and said, yeah, you, I got it right here. You actually raise your prices, raise the prices a little bit um, just because we, we it was it was kind of we started out the restaurant with very, very low prices, a little bit too low. And it, we, we were going to raise the prices anyway. And then with the, this new model, uh, everything prices of everything went up. So your to go boxes, your pizza boxes, your bags, all of that stuff went up. And if you're buying kind of, I mean, we're kind of a, a higher end pizzeria, so we're not buying just the cheapest to go containers. We have, it's a little bit, you know, the recyclable or the compostable ones. And, um, some of the, it's just a little bit nicer stuff. And that all went up in price because the demand for all of that just shot through the roof. Uh, all of a sudden, you know, hand sanitizer, all of everything that you're going through now, is the price went up. And so when you start to calculate, wait, my bags are costing me like 39 cents each. The to-go containers are like 26 cents each, 35 cents each. Um, uh, not all of them, but some things are just really, you know, remarkably expensive and, and, and you have to account for that. Um, and, uh, you know, we, we've always offered a, a neighborhood discount. Um, to our residents. And the thing, another thing that I've just been so appreciative of is people have just said, you know, forget the discount now. Like they, they want to support us and just pay what we need to charge. And uh, so that's been, that's been great. So yeah, I have, have not had to do any excessive discount. I mean, I've, I've given away gift cards and done, you know, that kind of thing, you know, sign up for our email list and get, enter for a chance to, you know, get a gift right. card, that kind of thing. But uh, I have not, we haven't found the need to, to, to give stuff away in order to get people back. They're, they're ready and they're happy. We're here. So. Well, like you said, you would offer that 10% for residents of uh, buildings in the neighborhood. Um, you said that the people are generously tipping now. Uh, you yeah. mentioned uh, one customer that pays with a hundred dollar bill. Yeah. yeah. He always pays with a hundred dollar bill and says, keep the change. And you're like, um, it's one pizza. <laughs> So, yeah, yeah, people, people are, are, you know, some people tip 15%, some people tip 20%, and some people say throw on 30%. Some people double the price. They say, oh, I'd say your total will be, you know, 25, 66, and they'll be like, okay, throw another 25 on top. Yeah, so, wow. yeah, it, it's been really, really, um, yeah, just warm, you know, people know that we're, people know the restaurant business is suffering. It's not a secret. Um, and they know a lot of people are out of work and they know people have lost hours. And um, so that's just been really great to see that that our customers have have acknowledged that. And if they can just, you know, throw something our way, because it makes a lot of diff a, a big difference for 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 us, uh, for the, the people who've gone from 40 hours down to 23. That makes a big difference if you can then say, oh, but, you know, there's 20 bucks extra, you know. <laughs> yeah oh absolutely now, you know that's what the 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 american spirit i think uh, yeah. that term's not been used enough right now um but that's what the american spirit is is to help out those who need it um when you can if you can so yeah. um, and i think that people do that towards the restaurant industry obviously because uh they still want to get food that they don't have to cook so. yeah <laughs> yeah and i i think it, it just talking to people i i, I feel like everybody did the Everybody did the, you know, sourdough starter and they're like, I'm going to bake and I'm going to yeah. you know, do everything at home. And then one month <laughs> into it, they're like, yeah, this is getting a little tiresome of like making every <laughs> single meal. <laughs> well, yeah, but I mean, you know, that's the funny thing is because I, I have a lot of friends who do that every single day anyway before yeah. this even happened. So yeah. uh, I, I did like the in, uh, the the resurgence of uh, a lot more sourdough starters. Yeah. I myself before this even happened tried to raise a couple. I named them, and yeah. I just didn't use them enough. I just didn't cook enough with them. So um, I know they last a while in the in the fridge and stuff like that. But uh, you can bring them back. They they just. Did you need yeah, yeah. feedings and then they come yeah, back. Yeah, absolutely. 
I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna birth a couple a couple new ones here shortly. But um, I did want to ask uh, one of the last questions uh, before I get to the last two things here. Uh, are there any changes that you've done now that um, that you had to pivot and then do that you're gonna keep post pandemic, um, such as maybe sanitation or oh, you know yeah. just having people wear gloves or something like that? Is there anything that you've had to implement now that you're gonna keep that you think is the the people are gonna want to see? Because buying habits have changed, customer habits have changed. As well. Or expectations, I should say, customer expectations. Um, yeah, I, mean, I, I think it's it's a good opportunity to just really drive home the importance of sanitation and um, working while healthy. Um, I guess the, the dreamer in me is really hoping that this will spawn some sort of the, the real realization that that um, people in the restaurant business, you know, by and large, we work without health insurance because restaurants can't afford to give it and and I would love to see this start a conversation about the need to not, you know, works. Everybody knows how, how it used to go in the restaurants. It's like, oh, you're not feel, you're feeling under the weather. You come in anyway. You know, you take one for the team and you, you, you show up. But that's not right, you know. And, and so what I really hope in this new climate is that not only us, but every restaurant is just going to have the, the, the confidence to say, you know what? This person was, you know, please stay home. We'll, we'll figure a way around it and, um, and, and make things happen so that we're really not, we're not at all contributing to the spread of any sort of, any sort of uh, illnesses. It's just very important, I think. And I'm, I'm hoping that that sticks, that, that, that ad adherence to like sanitation and health um, is is a permanent change and not just something that we're doing for these next three months, four months while everybody's, you know, that's the that's the new uh, the new thing that you got to watch out for. And then we just slip right back into, you know, uh, the same of like, of uh, it's just it's just not it, it's never it's never sat well with anybody. But it's kind of the way that the restaurant built the res, restaurant business built over the last, you know, however many decades of of. of that's how it works, you know? Yeah. Well, and, and, and it's not that, um, you know, that we weren't sanitary before, but now right. there's more of a concerted focus on that. Right. It's, it, it's that visual focus on that. They don't know what you're doing behind the scenes, but they, it's that visual um, cue of the masks and the gloves that sure. just lets them feel at ease. It's just, you know, it doesn't matter how much you sanitize or deep clean and deep scrub right. everything right. in the, in the back end, they don't see that. Right. Um, it's just what they see at the forefront. It's like, you know, the, the beautiful pictures you put on Instagram or on your menu. Right. That's right. what the customers eat with. So, all right. Well, I mean, uh, you know, if keeping that, that, that picture of a, uh, you know, sanitation, I think is a good one. I think that's a lot. That's something that people are going to need to do for at least the next year or two. Oh yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, it's the new, you know, I don't know if we're going to have to, you know, how long we'll have to keep taking our temperatures before coming into work and that kind of stuff. Um, I don't know. I mean, that's, that's a little weird, but is that going to be the new thing? I, I don't know. Uh, it, I, we'll do it. But, <laughs> but honestly, how much time does it take? Oh yeah. No, 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 no. It's nothing. Yeah. You know what I mean? So if, if that's what you have to do, just do it. So, yeah. um, I, I did want to ask you for just kind of one final tip on everything that you've gone through right now, uh, closing yeah. down, reopening, being brand new, serving pizza. What's like just one one tip that you could give to the industry, anybody watching right now. And oh, actually, you know what? I, I'm sorry. I'm going to ask you that in a second. Jason L. Williams, I don't know if you even know the answer to this. Uh, I like this guy. He keeps uh, he keeps popping up, uh, um, but he wants to uh, know. Uh, oh, I'm sorry there. My bad. He, how do you even start a sourdough? Do you, have you started your own sourdough starter? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's pretty much just water, water and 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 yeast and and, yep. and flour. Yes, I mean the old the way I've done mine before, and it's it, this is like one of those it's old school way. Um, uh, it's a slurry of bread flour and a little bit of whole wheat flour and water, and I do fifty fifty in weight. So like you know, a hundred grams of water, hundred grams of of flour. Maybe half of that flour is bread flour, half is uh, whole wheat. It really doesn't matter. That's just what I do, I think. And you mix it um, 
and you <laughs> let it sit and open. I like to let it sit open for um, about half a day and then you can cover it. I like to poke some holes in the cover and what will happen is those natural yeasts from the environment will just have settled in there and start to eat that sugar in the, in the flour and start the, the digestive process. It starts to ferment. Um, it starts to ferment. It's little bubble up and then descend back down. And then you just start the process of feeding it. You throw out about 80% of it and you feed it with fresh flour and water, mix it in and the whole cycle starts again. And what you get is this nice, ongoing cycle of of rising and falling of the 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 um natural yeast eating the sugars and expelling gas fermenting and um and the trick then of using sourdough starter is figuring out where to use your stout when you can what point in that cycle you capture the flavor and put that in your dough so then then your dough ferments for 24 hours and then it's at that perfect stage where it's a little tangy, a little, a little funky, a little, it's got that complexity, but it's not overly sour. So that's, that's, but that's basically how you start. It's basically mix it and let it happen. It, it will happen. Some people start things like, I know Italians have said to crush up a few raw grapes and throw them in there. That'll start the fermentation process a little bit. I did that once and it just kind of turned into a mess. So I've just always just let the environment kind of naturally, it, it'll, it'll, it just happens. It's one of those things. Well, um, yeah, my internet kind of crapped out there for a oh. second, and you were robotic and from the second you started explaining that. I just got into and the nobody. end. I hope everybody else heard that. I'm going to go back and watch that. But oh, yeah. I mean, it sounded like it was awesome. It was some, to some the point where you like secret, a couple of tomatoes. It was some super <laughs> secret information went through there. So if you lost it, uh, you're lost. Uh, yeah, that, that's. I, I got other sources. Don't worry, Adam. All right, all right. Uh, I'm okay. <laughs> uh, so actually, the final tip in the in the uh, industry, you know, the, the final tip that's something that you've had to go through, just kind of being a, a virgining. I don't want to say a virgining operation. I mean, mm-hmm. you've been around for a little bit, mm-hmm. but I mean, you know, what, yeah. what's one of the things that you've had to kind of overcome, and and uh, something you can maybe help others out with? I mean, I mean, I, I really don't have anything that is is new this is just I, i've just old le- lessons have been reinforced and really the thing that i think has made us feel confident about the future is our commitment to our relationship with our loyal customers that's making sure that people who come into the restaurant on a regular basis more than you know once you recognize them make sure that you know what they like to drink Make sure you like you know where they like to sit. You know, back in the day, now it's just I know what pizzas they like to eat, take away. I know if they ask for chili on the side or a, a extra parmigiano or napkins or you know all that kind of stuff. Just making sure that they know that you care about what they want, and because ultimately your regular customers, the ones who care about you, they'll care about you if you show that you care about them, and that's been. I've learned that like with this reopening process, it's become so clear, like all of the generosity and the, the support that we were, we're talking about that just comes from when we were open, how we treated them when we were open. Well, it's a cheers concept. Yes. You know? Yes. Yeah. Know everybody, you know what they want and just be familiar. Yeah. And it's just, it was part of the thing that I took away from restaurants in Italy when growing up, the thing that I was always impressed on me is just that, that, that hospitality, that, and I'm not saying that there isn't a sense of hospitality here. I'm just saying the Italian warmth of hospitality is next. It's familiarity. Level. It's next. Yes, it's familiarity. It is, you know, you almost go to a restaurant, your favorite restaurant in Italy. You go just for the, for how excited they seem and and interested in you, as as well as how awesome the food is. And and that's really something that we try to to carry to um to, to Laventino, that Italian hospitality great simple flavors of italy and um yeah just being that the the best kind of local pizzeria uh that you we can be that's that's all right well good answer you don't have to sit (laughs) on the (laughs) hot seat anymore i did want to say is there one just kind of positive affirmation that you can give to the industry right now i just give you know a good positive note yeah I, i i think you know 